Credit unions are changing. Customers tell me that their accounts have been frozen through the weekend. Stephanie Akers first noticed her debit card wasn't working when she went to get her nails done Friday night. The transaction was denied. In this video, we're going to talk to you all about the recent things that have been happening to many credit unions nationwide. It's an urgent warning from Help Me Hank, a scam that's costing victims thousands of dollars, and oftentimes there's no way to get the money back. We should at least know what's going on because this can happen again. Sandra Harris still can't believe it happened. Thousands of dollars wiped out of her account at Michigan First Credit Union in the blink of an eye. First, let's get this out the way early. I am a big fan of credit unions over banks, especially when you're making that decision. This video is mainly about the future of credit unions and what that's gonna look like for you. Now, people have to understand that we have to talk about the positive things that are happening at credit unions, and we also have to talk about the negative things happening at credit unions as well. So many people reaching out to help me Hank saying they too have been scammed. But we'll go into that later. First, let's talk about the positive things. Now, one of the many things that are positive that's about to happen at credit unions nationwide within the next year or so is going to be the Veterans Administration, also known as a VA loan. OK, they have fully accepted the use of home loans using Vantage Score 4.0, which is going to expand homeownership access for veterans and service members. So as you guys can see right here, uh, August 15, 2024, a leading national credit company announced today that the U.S. Veterans Administration accepts mortgage loans using the Vantage 4.0 score. Now, what is Vantage 4.0? Real quick, if you haven't done so already, be sure to download our free ebook. You can actually scan this QR code or you can click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. For those who don't know, Vantage 4.0 is the exact same algorithm that Credit Karma uses, Wallet Hub uses, Credit Sesame uses, TransUnion.com, Equifax.com, Identity IQ, and the list goes on. So that means the same score that you see on your Credit Karma app is gonna be the exact same credit score that they're gonna to use to qualify you for a mortgage. Now, this will take some time to happen, actually. It's not supposed to go in place until about 2025 or so, so probably towards mid to the end of the year, probably after the third or fourth quarter of 2025, but of course, we'll be sure to keep you posted. And once they roll this out with people that qualify for VA loans, it's just a matter of time before they start to roll this out for the general public. Now, another positive thing that's happening is that multi-billion dollar credit unions in California and Massachusetts are planning to merge, okay? This is gonna be First Tech Federal Credit Union Union and Digital Federal Credit Union. That will create the nation's sixth largest credit union if approved. Now, this just happened uh, September 30th, so we still got some time. It's still in the early stages. But as you guys can see right here, the $16.7 billion First Technology Federal Credit Union in San Jose, California, and the $11.9 billion Digital Federal Credit Union in Massachusetts said on Monday they plan to merge in 2025. Now, that's not the only merger that's happening either. The thriving Federal Credit Union plans to merge into Thrivent Bank. Hope I'm saying that right. Now, this was just announced in June of this year. Now, it was a bank before it became a credit union, and now it's going to become a bank again, okay? Now, the FDIC last week approved the deposit of insurance of, for Thrivent Bank and the merger of Thrivent Federal Credit Union into the newly chartered industrial bank that's going to be based in Salt Lake City. Now, it's actually been doing pretty good. Over the last 12 years, it's been operating as a federally chartered credit union, the Appleton, Wisconsin-based financial cooperative has thrived. And another merger that's happening is in Colorado and Kansas credit unions are announcing a merger as well, too. So the two CEOs will join together to co-lead the merged credit union. Now, this just happened on October 10, 2024, okay? So two credit unions in neighboring states have announced an agreement to merge on Thursday, creating a new entity that will reach nearly $4 billion in assets and serve over over more than 200,000 members. As we can see, most credit unions nationwide are headed in the right direction for the most part. It looks like many of them are still trying to be that same credit union relationship building brick and mortar, walk in, talk to me type of environment that they've always had. Now let's discuss some of the issues that many credit unions are facing like this. And we begin at 5.30 with an urgent warning from Help Me Hank, a scam that's costing victims thousands of dollars, and oftentimes there's no way to get the money back. 
All right, well, we're talking about high-tech thieves targeting those who bank with Michigan First Credit Union. And now police are investigating, and the credit union is taking some action to help some victims who reached out to Hank. Our consumer investigator, Hank Winchester, live tonight. Hank, this is a growing problem. Karen, it is a huge problem, and as you both mentioned, some people losing thousands of dollars. In just a moment, you're going to see how we were able to help this particular victim. Uh, take a look, though. This is one of the branches here of Michigan First Credit Union. Credit Union already taking action to help stop this before others are targeted. What has this been like for you? A nightmare. Yeah, stressful. Very stressful. Sandra Harris still can't believe it happened. Thousands of dollars wiped out of her account at Michigan First Credit Union in the blink of an eye. Out of my savings and, and checking account, up, over $10,000 less than two days. It started with a simple phone call, one that she thought was from Michigan First Credit Union. The person on the other line, a scammer, asking her specific information about her account. He asked me a question some more questions about my account, uh, my password, and and my code. So as we're talking with Miss Harris on her porch about her problems, her neighbor, Aaron, overhears us, and, and you apparently had the same problem with same the credit problem. union. How much money did you end up losing? 2000 And And how frustrating was it dealing with this? Very frustrating because the way uh, it was dealt and the way it was handled. And this problem, it's been going on for months. So many people reaching out to help me, Hank, saying they too have been scammed. They said, you know, we know some suspicious activity going on in your account. You know, we want to go over, you know, some transactions and see if there were you or somebody else. Police reports have been filed, an investigation underway. The credit union working to manage this one. But right now, unfortunately, there are many victims being scammed every single day. And take a listen to this. This is really interesting. Miss Harris says that her case was closed, that the credit union said there was nothing more they could do. Well, we got involved today, and just a short time ago, Miss Harris says now thousands of dollars have now made their way back into her account after they were able to re-review her situation. Now, it's unfortunate to see that that lady had to go through all of that, especially with her credit union. But let's be honest, we've been seeing this way more often just with banks. And what about this situation at a local credit union? Live visiting the ATM and finding that you're locked out of your money. It's a reality that people are experiencing here when they use Neighbors Credit Union in the St. Louis area. And they say that this problem has been going on for days now. Our Russell Kinsall is following that story tonight. Russell? I'm at the Neighbors Credit Union branch off of New Hall's Ferry Road. It has been a very busy place today because for customers, a lot of them, the only place they can get cash out is at one of the branches. Customers tell me that their accounts have been frozen through the weekend and some people still struggling to get access to their cash today. I got to come up here to get money. Bruce Edwards is still having trouble with his neighbor's credit union accounts. No, nothing was working on the weekend. They, they wasn't even open. Complaints are flooding in from credit union customers. I can't do nothing with my card, so I was really upset about that. Stephanie Akers first noticed her debit card wasn't working when she went to get her nails done Friday night. The transaction was denied. My son had to come up there and he paid for my nails because I didn't have any loose money. Many customers came face to face with the account blackout when they tried to get money at an ATM. Whenever I try to use an ATM, it will decline it. It would not give me any funds. Customers complained that they couldn't get gas for their cars over the weekend and they couldn't buy groceries to feed their families. The problem put Carrie Gray in a real difficult position. It was really frustrating because we went out of town for a funeral and not being able to um, get any money or anything. I reached out to the credit union to get answers and got this recording. Thank you for calling Neighbors Credit Union. We are currently experiencing issues with our central phone system. For immediate service, please visit our website at neighborscu.org. The credit union is not saying what caused the problems, but credit unions are frequent targets of cyber attacks. According to the National Credit Union Administration, from September 1st of 2023 to May 1st of this year, there were 892 cyber incidents involving credit unions. By Monday morning, some customers were able to access their accounts online, others were not, and there were still problems with using ATMs. We should at least know what's going on because this can happen again.
Now, we're not done yet, okay? But I do need to know your thoughts about if you think that the credit unions are at fault for many of these things that are going on right now. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, unfortunately, these past couple years have been very tough for credit unions. Let me show you. Like this, for example, where a former credit union employee uses prison inmates' personal information to approve fraudulent loans. Now, this is not what happened at Navy Federal or anything. This actually just recently happened July 16th, 2024, okay? Now, Nadaji Hendricks, who worked at the Hanscom, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Federal Credit Union, steals more than $134,000. Here's how they did it. In her phone conversations with Glenn Roy Miller while he was an inmate at a Massachusetts prison, from the winter of 2019 to the summer of 2021, assistant branch manager Nadaji Hendricks took notes from Miller's and the names, social security numbers, date of births, addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses and driver's licenses of his fellow prisoners. Now, Miller and Hendricks used that personal information to steal more than $134,000 in loans from the $1.8 billion federal credit union that they used to work at at the Air Force Base in Massachusetts. Also, many credit unions are starting to open up their doors to a lot of people. So since the requirements are changing to joining you know, credit unions, the average FICO score of credit unions members have declined slightly okay now this hasn't there's nothing to to get too crazy or too worked up about in 2022 the average fico score for credit union members was about 726 that number has fallen to about 725 and 7 uh, in 2023 and 724 of this year okay now the national average credit score among most consumers currently stands at 717 but last year it was 718 and 716 in 2022 according to fico OK, now they're saying that the one point drop in the average credit score of credit union borrowers in the last two years is likely driven by the increases in late payments and rising consumer debt levels, as we know right now in the economy. Then you have the elderly woman who pled guilty to the armed robbery of her own credit union. Now, Ann Mayer, 75 years old, is scheduled to be sentenced in October of this year. And this just happened uh, in September 10th, the most recent update. But a 75-year-old Ohio woman is expected to be sentenced in October after she pled guilty Tuesday to one felony count of aggravated robbery, okay? Now, she committed an armed robbery uh, of a branch of $192 million our group financial credit union, which she's a member of as in April. Now, here's a photo of Ann. She don't even look like she's 75 years old, but she faces a maximum prison sentence of 17 and a half years. OK, and then you have the craziest story that has happened in the last two years. OK, so now a credit union branch manager has been accused of a, attempting to hire a hitman to kill her brother in law. Now, check this out. This is an actual video snapshot of her being at her local Walgreens wiring the money to the hitman. Crazy, I know, okay? But don't worry, it gets crazier, okay? But in April, Rishma posted a public message on LinkedIn that she was excited about starting her new job at Mid Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union as a branch manager in New York. Today, the 39 year old mother of two children is in federal custody after allegedly attempted to hire a hitman to murder her brother in law, okay? Now, I know this sounds crazy, guys, but listen, I read this story and listen, it's most, first off, first off, her track record is almost flawless she's been in the credit union uh for five no five months at the time she's worked at seven banks uh starting out as a teller at td bank um and she's been at other places as well so she's been in banking for a long time but check this out this is an actual uh, these are screenshots of what the uh conversation was between her and the hitman she says uh, when you take care of business you know w when you take care of business you'll be a rich man and then the individual said I, um, I do hope that when we get rid of the victim for you, you don't roll us over. She says, I swear I have other jobs for you. <laughs> now, I don't know who else is on that list, but she says swear on her kids. OK, so either way, this is the conversation that they were having. And then this is when she actually walked into the actual Walgreens. OK, that's video surveillance of her. And then, of course, uh, the individuals that she was talking to, he said, uh, we have to do it in a fast and smart, smart way. They shoot him from the road. You understand. This is why I said I'll call you back. You understand to make sure that, you know, everything goes as planned and there's no turning back. She says, right. There's no turning back. Now, either way, now, this is the information from when it first happened. Let me show you where they are so far with the case. Now, as you can see here, September 6, 2024, 
former credit union branch manager sentenced for murder for hire plot. Now, again, Rishma claims that her crime was triggered by 25 years of harassment from her brother-in-law. Now, I'm not saying she was harassed or not harassed, but I don't know if the, if the way is to always kill the person. Now, that's up to you guys. Let me know your thoughts inside the comment section below. But a former credit union branch manager will spend the next nine and a half years in a federal prison for initiating a murder for hire plot. Now, that's actually not a horrible print, uh, uh, no prison sentence. She probably could get out for good behavior or something like that, because at the end of the day, it didn't happen, but it almost happened. Right. But who's to say that? Because, again, if the brother in law is still alive, Who's to say that she's not going to try this again? And for those who are wondering how much she was going to pay to get this done, she was only paying $10,000. Not that that's a low number or nothing like that, but that's $10,000 she was going to pay this person. And then the $2,500 that she had sent at Walgreens was just a down payment. So as you can see, good things are happening and bad things are happening no matter where you put your money. The most important question you have to ask yourself is what's the best option for me and my financial goals? No matter what your choice is, I'm going to tell you guys what my mom told me a long time ago. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.